I'd like to welcome a special guest, Mrs. Katerina Sikoff Magni, head of Europe's internal energy market. Hello, Mrs. Sikoff Magni, thank you for being here today. The first question, in terms of electrical distribution networks accommodating distributed energy resources and renewables and Fit for 55, we know that a great deal of investment will be required, but is there enough emphasis on automation and digitization? Thank you and uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Very pleased to be here today uh, with you. Uh, it is true uh, that smart energy networks, especially a smart electricity grid, uh, will be fundamental in en enabling uh, the energy transition to happen. Uh, without uh, the grids, uh, it would be impossible to bring uh, all the uh, resources, decentralized production, uh, etc., to consumers and to also at the same time benefit from uh, the flexibility potential that is there. So in all our pathways towards climate neutrality, electricity demand is projected to increase significantly and a large part of this uh, electricity uh, will come from distributed resources. Uh, we will see electrification of transport sector, uh, heating and cooling and also industrial sectors. At the same time, uh, we know that this electricity system will be largely based on variable and distributed renewable electricity generation. So it is even more important to look at how these resources will be connected uh, and it will be increasingly at low and medium voltage grids. These changes will impact profoundly the design and control of the grids and here the distribution system operators will play an increasingly important role at the European level and need to manage their networks more actively. actively. Smart grids, as we call them, uh, is uh, the uh, solution to this. It, uh, smart grids need to look at both digitalization and automation at the same time in order to improve grid operations and save costs to consumers. Uh, so the green and digital transition, uh, the Green Deal, uh, call for more interconnections, smarter and flexible networks and integrated energy systems. This all means more digitalization and more uh, automation. The investment needs, as you uh, rightly pointed to, are significant. Uh, we have estimated uh, in the order of 60 to 110 billion per year, and this in, in, involves a large share of modernization and smartening, smartening of our grids. Uh, to work more concretely on this important element, uh, we are currently uh, preparing um, and assessing on what the digitalization means concretely. So we have started working on uh, an action plan, if you wish, uh, on digitalization of the energy sector, where uh, the grids will form an important part. We will lay out in this uh, uh, action plan on the different elements that need to support uh, the work of the uh, system operators uh, and other uh, stakeholders in the energy transition. And of course, our research program will be a big support to this element. So to conclude, I would say that uh, there is sufficient emphasis on digitalization and uh, uh, automation, but of course, more needs to be put in place uh, as we speak. Thanks. Thank you for that. The next question is about the big focus we see on CO2 and pure decarbonization. But what about sustainability beyond CO2 emissions? What do you think about sustainability at the level of the distribution grids? Um, I mean, it may be true to say that our focus on the electricity grid development uh, is on carbon uh, emission abatement, uh, and of course on security of supply. And um, we have observed a trade-off between um, 
biodiversity protection uh, and climate change. For climate change, we need more investments in uh, renewable production and henceforth also uh, on grids. While for um, biodiversity, for sustainability, uh, from this angle requires more uh, protection and making sure that any investment we do is absolutely needed and uh, addresses uh, the uh, impacts on the ground in uh, and minimizes any harm done there. Uh, this is also linked to public acceptance, uh, and we know that uh, grids investments are often uh, at, the at the heart of the different debates with uh, the population because of the impacts uh, on the ground, because of the impacts on biodiversity, uh, and also uh, indirectly then climate change. So we need to find the right balance between uh, sustainability and climate abatement, and we need to be sure that uh, we scrutinize every uh, project uh, for these impacts to make sure that we uh, invest where necessary, but not uh, too much. So it is without saying that we must look at all emissions, not only uh, uh, coming from production, but also from the grids, and life cycle analysis here is, is key. Um, just a couple of words then on the policy we have on infrastructure, so the Trans-European Energy Network policy. Here, the deployment of smart grids is one of the priority areas that we want to strengthen. Uh, and with uh, intelligence, with digitalization, with automation, we may indeed be able to uh, bring all the resources uh, from production to consumption without unnecessary development of, of grids. So it will certainly have an impact on the optimization on where to build more grids and where to uh, look for intelligent solutions instead. Uh, but smart grids is not all. Uh, I mean, energy. every energy grid project, project need to be smart, uh, be it on transmission or be it on distribution level. So. Here, uh, we rely on the system operators and the other stakeholders to bring their intelligence to all the projects we are speaking about. Um, and last comment here on the need to continue working on uh, research. Digitalization data, interaction with distributed renewables, electric cars will require that the system operators, in particular at the local level, be in the forefront of innovation and transforming our energy system. So from our research program, we, have, uh, we are investing um, more than a billion in uh, the period 2014-2020 on making our grids more intelligent and henceforth also more sustainable. So here, uh, we trust that the grid operators will come with all the necessary uh, innovation solutions to look at uh, emissions, losses, sustainability. One last point here. Um, it is also important that the national regulators, when uh, approving investments, uh, also take into account the life cycle analysis and the impacts on uh, the best technology, or what are the emissions, what are the losses, um, so that we also start looking at the full uh, uh, scale of both benefits and costs of all uh, grid projects. Thanks.